Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about common sentence errors that students often make. And uh, part of this video is um, in large part adapted from the Hawks Learning Foundations of English material. Um, so this is going to be a two part video series and we're going to start by talking about sentence fragments. In the second video, we will talk about fused sentences and comma splices. So sentence fragments are a mistake that students often make in their writing. When a, uh, a sentence fragment is, is it's an incomplete thought or an incomplete sentence. One of the best ways to be able to find a sentence fragment is to first be able to identify a sentence. What a sentence is, is it's always made up of a subject and a predicate. And what those two things are is that a subject is the noun in the sentence that is doing the action. We know a noun is a person, a place, a thing, or idea. And when a noun is functioning as a subject, it is doing the action in the sentence. Now, a predicate is made up of a verb and a complete thought. The verb is the action in the sentence, and the predicate contains both the action word and the rest of the things that exist in the sentence that explain how or when or why or to whom the action is taking place. So let's take a look at two examples. The class studies writing. In this case, we have a simple sentence where class is our subject, studies is our verb or our action word, and studies writing is our predicate. In the second example, we have the students write discussion posts every week. In this case, students is our subject, write is our verb, and write discussion posts every week is our predicate. Notice how the rest of the predicate just explains how, why, with what, or to whom the action is taking place. Now, it's important for us to be able to recognize what a simple sentence looks like because it also helps us know when we don't have a simple sentence. That is, when we have a sentence fragment on our hands. Sentence fragments are made up of groups of words that sometimes contain subjects, sometimes contain verbs, but never make complete thoughts. So sometimes a sentence fragment can come in the form of a phrase. Here are some examples that come from your Foundations of English textbook. Hoping to get tickets to the concert. This is just a phrase, it doesn't tell us who, is hoping to get tickets to the con, uh, you know, to like with who? Who's hoping to get tickets to that concert? Another example: one of the most prestigious design schools in the country, the Morris Institute for Design. Well, in this case, we have a subject, the Morris Institute of Design, but the subject isn't doing anything, right? There's no action in this sentence. And so, one of the takeaways that we have is that a sentence fragment can be very short, like the first example, or sometimes it can be a little bit longer. But if it doesn't meet our basic requirements for what a sentence is, a subject and a predicate, uh, then it, it is in fact a sentence fragment. So there are some ways that we can correct fragments. We can do that by adding information to them or sometimes taking information away. In the case of a fragment that is a phrase, we need to add the missing information to it. So in the first example, all of the people in line were hoping to get tickets to the concert, well, now we have both a subject and a verb, and the original phrase, hoping to get tickets to the, to the concert, becomes part of the predicate. In this case, people is your, your subject, um, and all goes with it. All is an indefinite pronoun that connects to it, but people is your, your subject. And what are they doing? They were hoping. Um, so now we have a complete sentence on our hands. Another example would be one of the most prestigious design schools in the country is the Morris Institute of Design. This time we have added the verb is, it's a linking verb, and so we've uh, connected the Morris Institute of Design to a description of it, which is a prestigious design school. So one way we can fix fragments is by adding the necessary information to it. Sometimes we'll have what's called dependent clauses on our hands. And we've talked a little bit about dependent clauses when we talked about clauses and conjunctions. What a dependent clause is it's a group of words that contains a subject and a verb, but it does not make a complete thought. And the reason why it doesn't make a complete thought is because it begins with what is called a subordinating conjunction. Some examples of subordinating conjunctions are uh, begin these two sentences here, since and that, and thinking back to our video on clauses and conjunctions, 
And what subordinating conjunctions do is they create conditions. And if those conditions are not answered, then you don't have a complete sentence on your hands. So that artist's recent work had caused controversy in the community. Um, not a complete sentence. Uh, we could get rid of that and just begin it with the, and then it would be a complete sentence. Um, or we can add something to it. The second example, since I woke up two hours early. Well, I is your subject in that sentence. Woke is your, uh, your verb, your action word. Woke up two hours early is your predicate, but it's not a complete thought because we haven't answered since what? Since I woke up two hours early, I went for a run or I made breakfast for my girlfriend, whatever it may be. So here are some examples of how we can fix this sentence. Um, again, with the first example, you can just cut the subordinating conjunction right off. And now we have a complete sentence because we no longer have, it's no longer a dependent clause, it's now an independent clause that can stand on its own. The artist's recent work had caused controversy in the community. Artist, uh, artist's work is your, your subject or work is your subject. Had caused is your verb. Had caused controversy in the community is your uh, predicate phrase or your verb phrase. In number two, since I woke up two hours early, this time we're gonna add something onto the end of it. We're adding an independent clause to the dependent clause in order to make it a complex sentence. Since I woke up two hours early, comma, I had time to clean the house before coming to class. Um, you have both a subject, I, and a verb, woke, and then you have a new subject, I, um, had, and this time, the second, um, the second clause here is an independent clause or a simple sentence, and so we can combine those two to make a compound sentence. The next video is going to cover run-on sentences, which is another common sentence error that students make. So go ahead and rewatch this if you need to brush up again or uh, move on to the next video.